Joe Hart is our first member of the media into our Hall of Fame, accepting a plaque for the late Joe Hart as his son, Mr. Pat Hart. Yeah. <laughs> nice music, too. <laughs> um, you know, my speech has a lot of that stuff in it. I didn't realize that that video and the article in the news was going to tell a lot of that stuff. But I'll give it a shot. Thanks, Jack, and thanks to Voting Hall of Fame, mem fame members. On behalf of my father and for my mother in the audience, um, I want to thank you for this esteemed award. My dad would have considered it a grand honor to be included with the great athletes who have received this award. And during his time at newspaper, as a newspaper man, he was lucky to see many of these honored athletes in action and to write a column lauding them and to cover so many athletes from Little League to the pros. In his journalism thesis at Notre Dame, he wrote, the newspaper column is the most interesting phase of the newspaper. It allows you to ponder, to smile, and to occasionally laugh. What distinguishes the column from the rest of the newspaper is an intangible thing called style. He had a style of writing that was unique. He wrote a column for the Catholic Weekly and then retur and returned to take care of my grandfather's business. He spent the rest of his career at the Saginaw News. He used the character Billy Reardon to portray all the trials and tribulations that athletes then faced at all the competitive levels. And he gained that moniker, Injun Joe, like my brother said, mostly because he turned red after a minute in the sun. He used to try to get a laugh around St. Patrick's Day using the Irish brogue to describe big basketball games with coaches like O'Boyd or O'Franz. The newspapers of the 50s and 60s were the place to get the sporting news. He tried to keep everyone informed in an entertaining way. When he traveled to games, he tried to mention all the local people on the trains and the hotels along the way. He wanted to convey the passion he had for athletes and and athlete, athleticism and athletes in his articles. He really enjoyed reporting on college competition and wrote on the local athletes as they shined at their schools. I remember him talking to college coaches about the talent of the local athletes and talking, taking local athletes and coaches down to college towns to meet with coaches and staffs. I remember him talking to Bob Devaney while at Michigan State, and I remember him driving Bill Frieder down to Ann Arbor to meet with the athletic staff. His articles during the 68 World Series were tilted towards players like Jim Northrup and Al Luplo, and substantiated by Northrup's game-winning hits. I'll never forget waiting at, Tiger, at the Tiger locker room with my brother to meet the players that Dad asked to shake our hands, and meet him with Joe Schmidt and Wayne Walker outside Tiger Stadium before a Lions game, and talking to pro golfers at the Buick Open. Dad was a leading force promoting that Saginaw Golf Invitational, which brought the great local talented golfers together with the opportunity to compete with other gifted golfers. He did a lot to help with the Red Feather game, and he also worked to get bowling recognized. Having a father with sports editor had some perks, like sitting behind Bubba Smith, George Webster at the MSU Notre Dame 10-10 tie for the national championship, or sitting up in the big house press box, and getting to see some great Friday night high school games at the time. But it also had its drawbacks because of all the time he spent writing the column and putting the sports pages together every day. Like that film showed, it was a cut and paste job with printing deadlines back then. I'm not sure how a newspaper columnist managed to do this day in and day out and still do it with a flair to touch human emotions in the way he did in his articles. Dad wrote some famous columns, wrote to some famous columnists at the time in his thesis at Notre Dame. A comment from Paul Runyon was that in order to write a column, you had to go out and get it, and Dad did that, whether it was covering golf, bowling, youth sports, or the big weekend games. He was at those events, the award dinners, and all the promotional tasks that went with the job. That didn't leave a lot of time for family. Paul Malone wrote to him these words on the qualifications for a columnist. One had to have an instinct for the news, sufficient experience, and the ability to present fairly to the public. And I think Dad had this talent even if the Little League parents who burned them at effigy in our front yard one Sunday morning thought they weren't getting enough coverage. <laughs> Dad also took a punch from Danny McLean for a question I'm sure all the reporters wanted to ask at the, at the World Series, although even his articles did, the day before did mention that Little League was carrying the Tigers. Dad, in Dad's thesis, he wrote, Someday I would like to have the qualifications to be a full-fledged newspaper man and not a would-be journalist with a few newfangled ideas. I think he accomplished that goal, and he merits this Hall of Fame award. Thank you very much.